Aloha, everybody, and welcome to the Fit to Fat to Fit Experience podcast. I'm your host, Drew Manning. And I'm your co-host, Lynn Manning. Thank you guys for joining us again here on the podcast. As you guys know, yesterday was Steve and Tasha's episode on Fit to Fat to Fit on A&E. And so we are naturally going to have them on. That's what we're going to do for the next eight weeks now. Uh, last week, we had JJ and Ray on. This week, we had Steve and Tasha. And actually, Steve's wife, Bonnie, joins us as well. So you're in for a very entertaining episode. We talk about a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff, some of the struggles that they had, and a lot of great information on this one, you guys. And I, I promise you, you will laugh your butts off. Yeah, we talk about <laughs> Steve's prostate. <laughs> just kidding prostate. but actually i'm not <laughs> just kidding yeah and we have some funny stories from bonnie about yeah. uh, during steve's fit to fat to fit experience and and what and what steve's fit to fat to fit experiment meant to tasha did she find value in it or did she feel like it didn't really change uh the way steve trained at all so yeah uh, a lot of great information you guys and we appreciate you guys joining us each and every week here on the podcast and we hope you're tuning into the tv show on on a and e every week and we appreciate all the support Okay, before we jump into today's episode, this week's episode is brought to you guys by none other than dollarworkoutclub.com. Now, dollarworkoutclub.com, as you know, if you haven't already heard, is a program that me, Lynn, and Natalie Hodson got together and created. It's an online platform, and it costs just $1 per week, and you get access to five at-home workout videos that can be done at any fitness level, beginner, intermediate, or advanced, and all the workouts are between 8 to 20 minutes max. Uh, So our philosophy is working out smarter, not longer. So you get five of those at-home workout videos. You get five uh, motivational videos and five healthy recipe videos, all new content every single week, and all you just pay is $1. So high-quality product, very, very low cost, and we couldn't be more proud of it. Yeah, no contracts, no hidden fees, you guys. A lot of people, (laughs) the common question I always get is like, what's the catch? There really is no catch. You know, we hope to send this quality content to the masses. You can cancel at any time. Um, one of my favorite parts is actually the healthy recipes. We try to make them delicious, but very simple. I like the videos, but we also have all the details written out. And then we keep a library with all the videos. So literally, you're going to have dozens of great recipes to choose from. So check it out, dollarworkoutclub.com. Yeah, and honestly, you guys, there's a lot of competition. Obviously, there's Daily Burn. There's uh, the new uh, Beachbody, uh, the subscription websites that you pay a monthly fee they're anywhere from like 10 to 15 dollars but you don't get all three things you don't get workouts recipes and motivational videos uh, for that 10 to 15 dollars sometimes it's just a workout program or sometimes it's just a workout and a a meal plan program whereas we at dollar workout club encompass everything that you need for a very very low cost but you know we feel it's just as good if not better than these other programs so check it out dollarworkoutclub.com and we'd love to have you uh, as part of the DWC family is what we call it. Okay, let's go jump into today's episode with Steve, Bonnie, and Tasha. Welcome to the Fit to Fat to Fit Experience podcast. Steve, Bonnie, and Tasha, thank you guys so much for joining us today. How are you guys doing all the way out over there in Florida? We're great. Doing good. We're hot. <laughs> so, <laughs> too. so are we in Hawaii. It's really hot out here. <laughs> we feel your pain. Um, anyways, awesome episode last night, you guys. I really, really loved your guys' episode because it really showed the emotional side of this journey. Just like, you know, JJ's episode did last week. But very uh, different. But very different. Yeah. Steve's yeah. a different... Steve, so Steve... Steve had a lot harder of a time gaining the weight than JJ did. Yeah. yeah. Well, they did bo- I- well, it, you, yeah, he gained 60-some pounds, but you guys both struggled emotionally, which was really interesting. Yeah. We're going to dive into all of that today, but... Really quick, Steve, I want people to get to know you a little bit more on a personal level. You're the oldest trainer on the show, but obviously you're in amazing shape. And <laughs> Golly. Hey. Well, we're going to cut this short. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. I didn't finish. With that okay. being said, you're, you're one of the most in shape uh, guys uh, out of all the trainers on the show. So – I didn't finish what I was going to say. All um, they heard was old. All they heard was old and they just ran with it. Hey. Uh, You're on Christmas list. So okay. I'll, I'll okay. try not to dig this hole any deeper. I promise, okay. Steve. I, hey, I, just know I love you, okay? <laughs> right on. But anyways, so, so tell us a little bit about how you got started in the fitness industry. How did you get started with health and fitness to begin with? Oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. Um, probably in the mid to late 90s. I, I started actually teaching aerobics. I was one of the only step instructors back then. That, well, I say only. I was one of the only male step instructors. <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that kind of segued into personal training, and that's how I started to put myself through college. I started off with exercise nutrition and 
just kind of knew that I wanted to, um, to make a difference in people's lives. I started off wrestling in high school and that's when I first lost a lot of weight and started getting in shape. And I knew what it did for my self-confidence and, uh, I kind of grew up as a chubby kid, not, not obese, but just kind of chubby and out of shape. And, um, you know, I had a lot of insecurities and that kind of thing. And I knew what, it, what fitness had done for me. So as I got older, I just had that natural affinity for lifting weight. Plus, you know, growing up in the 70s and 80s, it's kind of, um, you know, it was the Arnold Schwarzenegger era, you know, and <laughs> Thor and, and Hulk and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, all your, your heroes were all these big guys. And it's not so much like that anymore. But, you know, I had that in the back of my mind and, and I did want to help. And I really did have a heart for, for changing lives. And, and it just kind of segued itself into, into exercise, nutrition and personal training. And then eventually a lot of my clients had a lot of issues that I felt like, wow, if, if I knew how to help them out before they, they would have gotten hurt, you know, what a great thing that would be. So I actually then went on to physical therapy school and got a degree in physical therapy. And, uh, as I, as I was thinking about starting a practice with that, my, my wife and I got an opportunity to partner into a gym. And so in 2000, we, we had our first gym in Valdosta, Georgia, and it's just kind of been, been like that ever since. That's so cool. And so really quick for you, Bonnie, are you, have you always been into health and fitness as well? Or did Steve kind of bring that with him when you guys met? No, I'd actually, I'd, I, I worked at my first health club when I was 18 and, uh, and, I worked at uh, actually a couple different locations, and it's funny. Even as a kid, my dad had, my dad always had home gym equipment, and I would get on there and do leg extension. I'm like, Dad, look how look how strong I am! I can lift 80 pounds. You know, my dad was like, Wow, those skinny legs really do do something, though. And I was like, I remember being really <laughs> proud of myself. <laughs> Aww, I love that. I have actually a picture of my dad doing the crab, you know, flexing every bit of his every muscle he had. And it's funny because I thought he was you know, just jacked then. And I look back and he was just, all he was is lean. He was a skinny, lean guy <laughs> with a little bit of muscle. He's actually more jacked now. But, um, but so I started kind of at a young age. I'd kind of just, I, I heard there was an application at a gym. I went there and when I started showing people on um, equipment and showing them how to use it, it was just, it was so neat to see how much appreciation they had for the instruction and the help. And I realized, um, you know, I had never struggled my, with my weight prior to Steve and I getting married. And then I got married and on the pill and my hips spread and I you know, went from a size six to a size 12. And, and uh, that was the first time I'd actually experienced having to um, put on a big baggy t-shirt and go to the gym and hide and see all these hot college girls working out and, you know, had that whole. Oh, that's the um, worst. Experience. <laughs> <laughs> She's always beautiful to me. Oh, <laughs> Good you guys answer. Are, so how long have you guys been married? 21 years. Okay. Wow. That's, that's amazing. I think that's, I you guys that. are such a great example. And I love yeah. following you guys on social media. I kind of want to talk to you guys a little bit about something that a lot of people don't know about. And Bonnie, you were very, it surprised me how open and vulner, vulnerable you were in talking about your guys' struggles. Because you come across as this perfect couple. You're in shape. Perfect you guys work fit, out together. Beautiful couple. Yeah. Ken yeah. and Barbie is what you guys' nicknames out there, right? <laughs> <laughs> so... I would love for you guys to open up a little bit and talk about those dark times. And I don't know how many years ago it was, but it just, it blew me away, but it was inspirational. Can you guys talk a little bit about that and how you overcame those, those dark days for you guys? Sure. Yeah. Um, it, it really, it happened a little over two years ago. Um, the, everything kind of came to a head and, um, we, you know, really it kind of in the uh, bottom line is we put work before everything else and our marriage started to deteriorate and, and, uh, and actually I'm looking at a picture on the wall right now that has the hospital bands and the bullet hole on the wall and all this, all this memorabilia from that time. But, um, but, uh, but basically uh, S- Steve was, uh, shot accidentally and, um, he, uh, d- that wasn't his, uh, that wasn't his, um, rock bottom. You would think that, you know, you get shot and all of a sudden you're like, Oh my gosh. Okay. You know, but it was really two or three days later when I actually went in the hospital to, have a tumor removed that I didn't even know I, um, that I didn't know I even had. Um, that was kind of when his, when he realized, okay, God's doing something. And I said, he had about a month before that, he was saying he wanted to go, to move out and, you know, he wasn't happy. And I was, I was, um, completely blindsided. I mean, I knew he was struggling, but I thought it was depression. I didn't realize it was, I didn't realize to the degree it was. And so the, this was about a month before he got shot. He was like, 
you know, I don't see us ever liking each other or loving each other. You know, I think we're right for each other. You don't love me and all this kind of stuff. And Whoa. I, I, I didn't even believe it. I mean, I told him, I said, that's ridiculous. You do love me. If you didn't love me, it wouldn't hurt this bad. Yeah. And I just refused. I refused to believe it. And, um, and he, you know, he wanted to move out and all this kind of stuff. Then all, then he got shot. Then I went to the hospital. Here we are both broken in the hospital room together. And, um, I remember he was reading, he was reading a scripture that said, um, I'm doing a new thing. Can't you see it? He said, I'll make a way in the wilderness and, a, and streams in the de- desert. And, and we kind of looked at each other and he's like, we couldn't deny that God was doing something new in us. And we could see it happening. We had no idea how in the world God was going to fix our marriage. We didn't know. I mean, it, I, I knew it would take a miracle. <clears throat> and, uh, but I could see that Steve wanted to do, he wanted to do the right thing. But what he wanted to be pleasing to the Lord, but there was no way he's going to do that and not be pleasing to our marriage, you know. So we just had to make some commitments and recommitments to God and, and really just chase after what we felt like was what his was for our life. And wow. in return, he blessed our socks off. And, <laughs> and, uh, and I, mean, I mean, honestly, it was two, two months after he had moved out, we were sharing our, um, we'd, our pastor asked us to share at our Valentine's Day um, dinner with the couples to encourage them to, to give them hope of people that think their marriage is falling apart because it's such a, it really is, you know, emotions, you know, you see those motivational things, you know, with, we know every fitness, fitness is like, we, we love those motivational posts, you know, yeah. and then you see the motivational posts and everybody's seen it where it says, follow your heart. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, don't follow your heart. Your heart <laughs> lies to you. And it's just amazing how we look back and we can see how emotions had caused us to, um, you know, really, you know, Steve was hook, line, and sinker, you know, convinced that he didn't love me. Yeah. And um, and we look back on it now and just realize that how deceitful your heart can be. And um, so when we were in the hospital room that night, he actually started writing down everything. I mean, just journaling every thought, everything that happened. And he said, if we can make it through this, if God really wants us to, he said, I feel like if, if he's going to save this marriage, it's for a purpose. And he said, we have to tell our story. So we kind of agreed that night that if we were to make it, that we wouldn't do it quietly and that we would, we would share what we have gone through to encourage other people not to give up. Yeah, and, uh, I love and- that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that because I think we have a tendency, obviously, to do the opposite. I, you know, I know so many people um, – that, you know, when we struggled in marriage, I know I did the exact same thing that we tend to want to hide it. Um, you know, a lot of times people don't talk about the bad. They talk about how social media is the, the you know, fun reel. You know, what you see is all the good. Yeah. Like, look at all the amazing things I'm doing as a wife and as a mom and as a friend. And a lot of times we don't post the bad. We don't post, I'm having a really hard day or my spouse and I are struggling or, you know, because we don't want to quote, look bad, but it's in those vulnerable moments and in that honesty that not only, you know, can we get love and support, but we can reach out and inspire others. And I'm sure by sharing that, by sharing your story of going through that and how low it got to the end of your rope that you have inspired other couples, you know, that have felt very much alone. I look at it, you know, very similar to fitness and weight loss is that, you know, if, if nobody knows that I used to be a hundred pounds overweight, let's say, you know, and they, and they see a fit young or a thin girl or whatever, um, they, they don't appreciate the, the fit shape girl, you know, until they say, Oh, I was a hundred pounds heavier. And they're like, Oh my gosh, really you were. And then all of a sudden they're like, they, and I, and I feel like that's kind of like, basically Steve and I were really out of shape, obese couple that was just unhealthy. And if we don't share the before, you never really appreciate the after. And, and, you know, I think it's, um, my, and my parents were always very vocal and verbal about their own struggles. So I knew marriage was tough. It was not a surprise to me. It was a little bit more of a surprise to Steve. I think Steve thought it was what the movies were rolling around the beach and, you know, everybody was infatuated with each other and, sexy and stuff and and you know nobody folded laundry and did like normal daily things it was just whatever you saw on tv that was what love was <laughs> yeah so it was well, a- uh, hold on I, see, a lot of it's under the premise of of when i got married bonnie really did make me happy and and i i had started to put a lot of weight in 
that was really what I thought marriage was all about. It was about to make, make me happy. It's all about you. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie, Bonnie read something in a blog that she shared with me one time that marriage isn't there to make you happy. It's, it's really there to make you holy. It's, it's for the first time, you know, really learning what it's, what it's like to, to truly love somebody, you know, kind of uh, not because or, or not 50-50, but just wanting to serve that person, wanting to see you make that person happy regardless. Well, there's nobody that pulls the junk out of you. You know, there's nobody that's going to push my buttons as much as Steve. What? And, uh, so, <laughs> you know, and, and that's, the, that's the, that refining part that, you know, if we were just all get divorced every time we ha all that junk starts going to the surface, you know, you're not, you're not working on that junk. You know, the, the, your spouse brings that to the surface for you to address and improve and, and grow. And, uh, but, you know, unfortunately in the world we lived in today, as soon as, as soon as you have enough junk come to the surface that you don't like, you just skate and go on, go to, to another person and see if, and, and eventually your d junk's going to come back up again. So, uh, you know, it, the, it, it's funny. It, the return is, is that as, you know, yes, marriage may is not necessarily Steve. My goal in life, my, you know, I want to please Steve. I want to love him and stuff. But, but it's the you know, marriage. I'm, I he was looking to me to be happy. Like, like he was only going to be happy if I made him happy in his mind. You know, and um, but when when you look at marriage as a different like like my spouse is a tool, a refining tool, and sometimes it's going to feel like a really coarse sandpaper that's going to hurt. But it's going to polish out the rough edges if I if I'm if I allow that tool to stay with me long enough. And uh, you know, and, and that's kind of what now that we we see marriage the way I feel like it's in a healthy view instead of you know it's it's my it's up to me only to make Steve happy, which is ridiculous. And there's no human that can that's perfect that can make somebody happy like that yeah. but you do but, now yeah <laughs> but as a result there's no pressure you know and now we actually are more happy than ever because we have so much more grace for each other we extend grace to each other when we screw up and stuff like that because there's not that pressure so we yeah. anyway you know bottom line is is just like with a marriage and fitness you know we we've, we've learned how to to eat right we've learned to take in the right things in our marriage we've learned how to take you know we've had, learned how to get healthy and we just want to share it just like we do when we share the information that we've learned with, um, yeah. with, with actual fitness. Well, the biggest take home for me was the, the, the obedience and, and that's kind of, um, you know, Tosh and I really went through all that. You'll see it in the episode as, as we're getting skinnier and skinnier and hungrier and hungrier. And, you know, you vibe on your emotions so much, you might feel this way and you have a really strong desire to do this or do that, eat this rest, you know, not work out. Yeah. And it's just your emotions, especially losing weight and, and especially in relationships like marriage, your emotions just lie to you. You know, they, they feel so real. They, they, they can make you feel like you're starving, yet it passes. And regrettably, we do things during those times where we're trying to satisfy those appetites and you're giving into your own desires and not looking out for, for the needs of others. When, when you start to serve yourself based on your emotions – it really wrecks your long-term goals. It really wrecks whatever you're truly called towards, whether that's fitness or, or being a good dad or good husband. So it, it, keeping the, the end game, keeping the end goal in mind, you don't have a choice but to, to be disciplined and be obedient in your choices, not, not based on how you feel at that second. You yeah. can't go off of those desires. So it, yeah. was, it, it was really interesting as, as I was obedient and I came back. Cause one of the first things I told Bonnie, this is before I got shot. I told Bonnie, I was like, you know what? I, I think we're supposed to stay together. Cause I had prayed about it, prayed about it. And <laughs> I was trying to justify leaving the best I could, but I, I finally came down to the end. I'm like, you know what? I really feel like we're supposed to be together. I said, but don't, don't make any mistakes about it. You know, that's when I dumped all this. I don't want to be here. I don't love you, but I'm going to stay here. If that's what I'm supposed to do. You know, that sort of thing. And somewhere in the obedience, my heart started to break and, oh boy, <clears throat> and, and, you know, God started to, to change my heart for her. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then, you know, of course, then I got shot and we got shut in this room and, and it was almost like he put us in timeout in the hospital room for three days. And all we had to do was just talk about how to fix this and, and talk about, uh, forgiveness and talk about grace and, and talk about where we went wrong to begin with. And anyway, it was a really interesting time, but it all did just like fitness. It, it really did start with obedience and, and making good choices based on 
where you want to be, not on how you feel. Yeah, no, that's great. And thank you guys so much for sharing that because I wanted you guys to share that because I think it's it's very inspirational and motivational, but it's kind of cool how you guys related it to fitness. A lot of things in life, you know, our spirituality, I think, is related to our physical fitness and vice versa. Um, so thank you guys for sharing that. I kind of want to switch gears and get Tasha in here a little bit because I feel like she's uh, she's been left out so far. But uh, Tasha, you, you are... Um, I love your personality, first of all, but I want you to give people a little bit of your view of yourself before you did this show. How did you view yourself growing up as a mom when you first became a mom before you got into this, uh, the TV show? Um, A selfless mom. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just a teenage mom and I did everything for my family and my husband and made sure that they were happy and taken care of. And I thought I was the greatest mom ever because I always put them first. I thought that's what you were supposed to do. And that's what would be, you know, great. Yeah. yeah. But then on the inside, did you like who you were as a selfless mom? Did that make you feel happy? Like I'm such a great mom. I do these things for my kids. How did you feel on the inside with uh, being this selfless mom that you viewed yourself as? I actually, I, I did feel that I was doing great and I was happy with myself. I didn't resent it at all. Yeah. I um, it took long into my journey, the, this journey to realize that it was a little backwards, but I, you know, I wasn't happy. I figured that out, obviously, but um, I just thought that I was a great mom for doing, doing it that way. Yeah. And I think a lot of, a lot of moms out there can relate to that. They're like, you know what? I, I, I don't exercise. You know, I don't eat healthy. But at the same time, my kids are happy. My husband's happy. I'm doing all these great things for my kids. And that's my justification for, you know, not taking care of myself is because, you know what? It, it, I find happiness in serving other people. And a lot of women can relate to that. Oh, yeah. And I know, you know, that's always been an excuse of mine. A lot of times I even would resent Drew because, you know, he would go to the gym, <laughs> especially back in the day you know, he would go to the gym for longer. He could be at the gym for two hours and, you know, and then he would make a comment like, oh, why don't you go to the gym? And I'd make a snide remark like, yeah, I'd love to have the time to do that, you know, but, you know, in between like everything else I'm doing, like working and cleaning and, you know, serving in the neighborhood or church calling and friends and kids and yeah, I'd love to have two hours, you know, and then um, I realized as time went on that, you know, we are like a well. And we're constantly, you know, giving of the water within our well. But if we're not doing stuff for ourselves, if we're not feeling that well, it's empty. And so it's that catch 22 of explaining to someone, I know you don't feel like you have time, but if you make the time for yourself, I promise other things will start falling into place. You'll be happier. You'll be able to give more. But, it, you know, if you write it out on paper, or try to show someone that vision, a lot of times they're like, I don't get it. You know, I'm like, you just have to trust, you know, do something for yourself, you know, focus on you. And as you're doing that, you're really going to be able to give more to those around you, especially to your family. Exactly. And that's happened now. That's totally how it's happened. I'm way happier. I didn't realize how I was sad or resentful a little bit. I didn't realize any of that until I started taking care of myself and putting myself first. And actually, I'm a, the kids seem happier because I don't know, they, they just love that I'm in shape and I'm able to participate with them. I'm not just the sideline mom. It's just amazing. Yeah. And you know, what's funny is it actually takes some faith, you know, relating it to what, what um, you know, Steve and Bonnie were saying, uh, the spiritual side of it. It takes some faith think, saying to yourself, if I dedicate time to myself, this is going to make me a better person. But I, at first you're kind of doubtful. You're like, well, it seems like it wouldn't because I'm already happy and I'm doing all these nice things. Service is important, but I'm not serving myself. It's like, well, it's going to take some faith for you to just do it, take care of yourself and see how uh, how much better you feel. And so now it sounds like you're living that lifestyle. Um, I kind of want to um, go back to Steve a little bit and ask you why – because you've been on other TV shows, Steve. Why did you want to do Fit to Fat to Fit? What was the reason? It, was, it started off where uh, Bonnie and I – or I guess mostly me. I was I was praying for – you know, as things were changing that year – we heard about the casting for it um, late in 2014. And, you know, I was, I was wondering, you know, our, our marriage was going well. We're spending some time, you know, fixing that, um, getting more involved in church, relationship with God is, is growing. 
And I just wanted to know, you know, am I evolving as, as a husband? Am I, am I changing? Or is my identity still caught up in this old guy that was still full of flesh and, and self-serving? And, you know, like, who, who was I? You know, what, what, how am I changing? So as I started thinking about that and praying about that, it was like, lo and behold, we get a call about the casting. And it was interesting because my first thought was, wow, maybe this is, maybe this is it. And as the casting process went on, I realized what they were asking because they weren't real upfront about it. <laughs> Intentionally. Just sign here first and then we'll tell you about we, it later. We know trainers. The last thing we wanted to start with is, hey, do you want to gain some weight? Like <laughs> right. 50 pounds? Well, it came, exactly. And it, went, it grew from there, but it became painfully obvious, um, you know, because I had heard uh, about Drew's journey. Um, but I, I hadn't looked at it intimately, you know, I didn't really look at the entire thing. So they called back three times by the second time I, I knew that it was based on Drew's book, fit to fat to fit. And that's when I got worried. <laughs> you know, I started scrolling around I, and I pulled up pictures of Drew and I was like, Oh no, you know, and I, I could tell. I could hear. So here's what I was hearing. You know, it's like not an audible voice from God coming down and saying anything, but I really felt impressed that that God was saying, you know, I'm, I'm going to bring you to a point where you're going to have to let go of yourself and you're just going to have to trust me completely. And that's when I, I knew that this this whole fit to fat thing was 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 what I, I felt like I was being called to. And at that time, I felt like I was all in. I was like, you know what? I have never gained, you know, I, I do amateur bodybuilding type stuff and I've competed, you know, and I've wrestled in the past and I've dropped weight. And after I've dropped a lot of weight, it's nothing for me to gain 30 pounds, but 50, 60, 65, you know, I've, I've never in my life. And I didn't even know if my body could, but that was the point I think God was trying to make in my life is, is why don't you do something where you have to depend on me completely? Yeah. And, uh, and so I kind of let go of myself and, and, Sure enough, as the months went on, I'm looking in the mirror and I'm seeing less and less of myself. And it was scary, but I learned that if I ever want to know who I'm going to be, you know, in Christ, then I, I need to let go of everything that, that I thought I, I wanted to be. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, that's kind of, that was my journey. That, that's how it all started. <laughs> and so it was a very, I don't want to call it a religious, spiritual thing, but it was, it was I felt called to it to really find out who I am without being the fit guy. And I know, you know, talking to Drew and, and reading some, I, I realized that that's who you were in the community. You know, you were the fit guy. You, you had first expectations you had on yourself and other people had on you. And in our community, it was the same thing. No matter where I went, I was that guy. And even Tosh before, you know, when we, she and I first met, she had taken one of my boot camps three or four years earlier, if not more. Right. Yes. So, you know, it's like everybody kind of knew me as that guy. So it was, it was interesting because I got to let go of that and see who I was, you know, in my skin. Yeah. I remember when he came home from he was going to Sam's to get something and, and he and he came home and he goes, Man, I realize I just realized how prideful I really am. He didn't he said, I goes, I am so ashamed. I have my cart and I'm going around the corner and I've got like pizza and I've got all these things and he goes, and I just was thinking, Man, I hope I don't see so and so or I hope nobody sees me from the gym, you know, and and uh with it and he said, I, I realized there was something about, you know, living that fitness lifestyle that where you're like, You're you're standing tall, your head's up and you know, you got, you know, look in my cart. I got <laughs> I got tail. <laughs> Don't you wish you were as disciplined as me? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and it's funny because Steve and I have never thought of ourselves as, you know, self righteous pride, prideful and self righteous like that, but but I think it's been such part of a lifestyle for so long that we, we were used to just, you know, feel, you know, there's a, it's funny because there's, it's a natural response to be proud of yourself, you know, proud of yourself. You go to the gym, you know, proud of yourself that you eat well and stuff like that. But, um, but I, I think that's, you know, can be really scary uh, line to the cross when you start becoming judgmental because you're so, I'm so, you know, self-righteous that, you know, I, I, I eat well and everybody should, it's not that hard, you know, whatever and stuff. And it really kind of, uh, Steve said, I really learned something about myself today because I didn't realize how proud I was of my lifestyle. And it, it wasn't so much, Steve's always been very, very, um, uh, kind of, um, what do you call it? Uh, conservative. Like he was, he, he doesn't walk around with his shirt off. You know, it's like if he's, it, it has to be really hot when he's washing the car, maybe to take his shirt off. He's <laughs> always been pretty, you know, um, 
conservative when it, when it comes to that kind of stuff. So it's not like he was prideful with his body because he was always um, <laughs> very, uh, he's lifting up yeah. his shirt right <laughs> now, sticking out his belly. But, um, but, you know, so it was really, you know, going to the beach with your shirt off and, and stuff like that was the whole experience. I have to say, I really thought he did way better than I thought he was. I thought he was going to be crying all the time. <laughs> She's calling him out. She's yeah. calling him out. <laughs> yeah, she's good at that. No, no. What I, what, but what I love about what you're saying is, you know, I find it interesting. You know, as a trainer myself, I try to reinforce and reiterate over and over and over to my clients that you are not your weight. You are not just your looks. You know, people focus so much on the exterior and somebody that's overweight is going to be struggling, think, you know, feeling down about themselves and how they look. And like you're saying, having no pride in themselves because of their weight and because of their looks. And it's funny that they they have that. We try to reinforce like you are not your looks, you are not your weight. But on the flip side, you know, Bonnie and Steve, you're pointing out, you know, Steve had to come to that realization on the opposite end. You know, that, it. you know, being a fit person, you know, a lot of times I feel like as trainers and as I talk to a few of the different spouses that, you know, that were struggling as their spouse was going through the fit to fat to fit TV show, I'd remind them, like, remind your spouse that this is not who they are. They are not just a fit person. They are not just their looks. They are not just a six pack. Like you're so much more than that. And it's interesting that, you know, as trainers, we try to reinforce that to our clients, but we forget that we kind of need to remind ourselves and reinforce that to ourselves as well. So Steve kind of, sorry, that was like a long segue into my question that I've been thinking it, you know, um, <laughs> sorry, it's because I'm a woman. So <laughs> my, my, what I was thinking is, you know, how did you view, you know, going through this whole process, you know, how you viewed overweight people before you started this journey versus now? What's the biggest difference a lot of things didn't change you know the fact that it's bad choices um the the fact that that they're continuing to make bad choices but the the thing and you know environment that that kind of stuff but the thing that did change for me is realizing the how much somebody's going to wrestle with the behavior of of being fat and trying to change it or just being out of shape because i see the same thing with sedentary people whether they're fat or not just trying to get somebody to to get fit. So never mind the weight thing. Um, I think what, what I, what I used to struggle with and, and I didn't think that I was being judgmental, but it's like, look at the lifestyle. I, I already knew when, when I look at a client, I imagine you guys do too. I think as trainers, one of the things we're gifted with is, is seeing somebody's potential and we know what it's like to be fit. So you're thinking, man, you could have this, this, this piece, this joy, you can move freely. You don't have to be so enslaved to, to your body or a sedentary lifestyle or feeling sick. Or, and, and the funny thing is those, those people, if they've never been fit, don't even have a clue how they're feeling. And I'm looking at that as you're practically, you practically, you have, you have one foot in the coffin already and they, they don't have anything to compare it to. And you're, you're, you're trying to, I don't know how to explain it. Um, you have you have the the hope that this person will will change their their life, change their body, change their lifestyle. Um, but it, it's a hard sell when they're thinking, oh, well, you've always been fit. You know, you're never going to to to, to understand what I'm feeling, that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> That's kind of why we share our marriage thing. We like they they listen to your advice a lot more when they know you've gone through tough times too. Mm. You yeah. know, the fitness. And that's one of the reasons I felt like I needed to do this journey was because there's something I'm missing. I don't understand why it's so hard for them. I need to have a better understanding. And that's what caused me to eventually do this crazy journey. And now it's a TV show. And you guys are having to do it. Was that I felt like there was that disconnect. And, you know, people who were my clients told me, you don't understand. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. It's so easy. Why is it so hard for you? <laughs> and so it definitely gives you that a, a different perspective, a better understanding of kind of where they're coming from, right? We don't pretend to know exactly what it's like to grow up overweight um, and, and be and have the same experiences, but at least you can, at the end of the day, say you have a better understanding. Now, Tasha, in the episode, you got emotional when Steve told you he was going to be gaining weight. And I'm curious to ask you, what made you get emotional when Steve said he's going to be gaining weight for four months? Um, because I know how, how hard it is and how people judge you and look at you and assume 
things about you. Um, it's just you don't like you don't like yourself. I just didn't want. To, I mean, I was I didn't like who I was. I didn't want him to have to go through it. It's just a terrible thing. That's so interesting, and I, I love that. It's so powerful because Ray from last week's episode kind of experienced the same thing when JJ told him he was going to be doing that. And do you feel like you appreciated? Steve Moore for for doing that versus if he was this was just a typical weight loss show where he's this trainer telling you to lose weight do you feel like there was some value in him having to do this first before training you? absolutely I feel like he he knew what I was feeling and all the emotions and how actually it really was hard for being an overweight person like the aches the pains the emotional um the emotional weight of it, like how you feel when you try to work out and people are looking at you, just he totally put himself in my shoe. Uh, yes, totally. I uh, much more respect and <laughs> yeah, awesome. Uh, no, that's great. It's funny. It's, oh, go ahead. It's funny. I was just gonna say, you know, when people would go up to me and ask me about Steve or uh, um, gaining weight, you know, I heard I heard Steve has to gain weight or what's he, do? you know, or like, you know, just kind of like, you know, there and. It was interesting to me how many people that the people that were overweight, their response almost every single time was, "Wow, that is really cool," and 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 then the fit people were like, "What is he an idiot?" <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You know, but it, but it's funny. I I could I was really overwhelmed by how many people, and and it was definitely the people that struggle with weight themselves. How. I could see a, something in their eyes of, of just some, they connected instantly. Like they thought that that was the coolest thing that Steve was willing to give up his body basically and everything that he knew to pack on these pounds to, in, in order to get in the skin of a client and understand what they went through. It was, it, uh, I wasn't expecting that. I, I thought people would might make, you know, think he's crazy and all that kind of stuff. But when, when I saw how it connected with people, I realized the value of, I mean, there's nothing like, like you said, um, you know, I think one of y'all said, get, of gaining weight, growing up, and, and having a long term, you know, Steve was chubby and on a diet as a kid, so he had some of that experience. You know, and some people I've seen out there have said stuff like, you know, that's ridiculous, they're not going to understand how somebody's, you know, over how somebody really struggles that, you know, they've been fit all their life and they don't, you know, some people discounted it, but, sure. but I think, I think all in all, um, you know, I think it's, it's been, I know for me, I, you know, I, I led them in boot camp and Steve was dead last, you know, like, <laughs> like for the first few weeks, you know, he was like really <laughs> struggling. And, and if nothing else, he would be like, we really need, you know, he, he had taken, he'd done boot camp. Or he'd never done the actual program. And so for him to actually be there with Tasha, and Tasha was kicking his butt. And then she was walking. Yeah, girl. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when one thing that I know that Steve has has um, had a kind of a, a a new experience with was being the overweight person in our boot camp programs, being the overweight client, you know, putting in stuff through stuff. He definitely um it, it made us kind of even change a little bit and just restructure our boot camp even just a little bit. Just just some of the stuff that he realized was insanely hard that doesn't really need to be insanely hard, even though we want to keep it tough and we want it to have good results. Um, you know, it was it was kind of an eye opener for him of what he feels like the it was good to get in the client's shoes and actually experience what the client experiences. And and even though we have done that all our lives, we did it as fit people. Not as not as overweight people, you know, for the most part. I mean, we, you know, we've had our ups and downs through, through you know, we, we both got fat when we got married, you know, and stuff like that. But it, but nothing like what, you know, not living like the healthy lifestyles that we live now. It's not really fair to, for the trainer to put himself to the workout and consider that a good example of uh, what the, what's going through. So yeah, I know I, for him, it definitely changed some stuff. Well, that's no, and that's the thing is like people are always going to say, you know, muscle memory. You were only overweight for four months. There's no way you could you'd understand. I agree 100. percent I'm like, look, you're totally right. There's no way I could ever really know exactly what what you're going through. And the same thing for the trainers on the show. And I don't think we pretend to know. Oh, look, we've done this. Now we have this badge of like, you know, hey, we're we know what what you're going through for for the most part. But you can 
at the end of the day, at least say you have a better understanding, at least for me, I definitely gained some empathy, gained a better perspective. And at the end of the day, every trainer on the show appreciated their health so much more having gone through this. Once their health is gone and taken away, then they realize, okay, I'm not my body. I'm not just my six pack. There's more to me and you have to learn and grow from this. And and I, I definitely saw that in, in every single trainer, Steve included. Um, so I got to ask you, Steve, and you got to be honest with me, your first workout back with Tasha when you uh, <laughs> you got to ask me or you got to answer me how hard was that like for reals because i know on the, the episode they edited a lot of stuff out how hard was that first workout back un- unbelievable uh, you know there's you think back in your life to some of the hardest most sobering workouts you ever had for me it was like um preseason. What, the first time i made uh the wrestling team for varsity you know you're going from jv and they're just proving a point <laughs> that you have a long way to go um that was a hard one i remember um you know, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri during my basic training. I remember when they tried to kill us there. Um, I got a chance to work out with uh, a couple of the MMA guys who came to a local gym where I was at and they wanted to put a beat down on me just to prove a point. You know, it's, it's those, those epic once in a lifetime type things. And this was definitely the top, the, the top of all of that. It was, it was, it was brutal. You know, the cameras are on you. You got the producers yelling at you, wanting it to be organic, which was not a problem. <laughs> and then you know, the other side of it too is here's this woman that I'm responsible for that we're just, this is our first workout together for the most part. And <clears throat> I didn't feel validated. You know, I, I felt like I, who am I to train her when she's here kicking my butt? You know, <laughs> it started off some behind the scenes. Um, Really great producer for this company, uh, Craig was, and we really got to to be close, of course, doing all this. But uh, you know, he's like, "Well, let's put her through a little bit of the workout." So you'll you, you saw on the beach, you know, I'm yep. I'm working her out, and um, I think you know behind the scenes, they're they're unbeknownst to me. Um, now you're going to do it. I'm like, oh, what? You know, like, I'm going to do what? No, no, no. This was her workout. I have something completely <laughs> different for me. <laughs> So the thing I know I'm, you know, and I, I, you know, like a grown up, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll do this, you know, and I'm trying to think, surely it can't be as bad as what it, I'll do a little bit better than she did. Okay. Man alive. What was it like halfway down the, the, the little course going back and forth? I thought I was going to die, but <laughs> you know, I, I have the resolve to be able to suck it up and, and luckily training the way I have in the past, I, I knew what would kill me and what wouldn't. So I pushed all the way to the point where I didn't think I was going to die. <laughs> And uh, Greg was you like, okay, looked like you might die on the <laughs> okay, show, right. on the episode. I mean, we're not there you, yet. So that's you, when Craig told me that okay. we, we need to do it a few more times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, can't you just kind of splice and, and edit and do whatever you need to do? So anyway, I, I went through it, I finished the course, and then I think I had, I can't remember how many times she actually did it, like three times. I think I only did it twice. But um, it was honestly. I went past the point of, you know, because you have the cameras on you. I've got the accountability of Tasha being there, and I'm supposed to be this trainer guy that's going to be on A&E, you know, all that, all that stuff, you know. And, yeah. and the other part of it too, Drew, you probably felt this. My body remembered what it was like to run through sand and carry stuff. You know, it's like that was not a problem. Um, but my, my muscles and my, my brain had a very brief discussion on quitting, <laughs> and uh, my brain won. Yeah, but you know what's interesting? It's, it's so good to be humbled, right? We all yeah. agree that to be humbled is a good thing. It makes you a better person. Makes you. What's that? Not on national TV. Not on national TV. <laughs> no, that's what everybody's gonna love. I think the 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 one single piece good. that people are gonna yeah. love is not just you getting fat, but your first workout back. Yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, because it's like yes. See, that's how hard it is. You don't understand. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie, Steve. I'm just throwing it out there to be honest. I love seeing that, especially because at times you had such a hard time gaining the weight. And there's me and I'm like, I could eat all that food and never feel sick and gain the weight in a heartbeat because I had before. And then I saw you die in the workout. I'm like, OK, he's all good. It's- <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's all good. OK, well, we're, we're, we're running out of time, you guys. So what we want to do first before we jump into our lightning round which uh, is the funnest part of the show, oh, yeah. to be honest with you, is first tell everybody where they can find you, your social media, your websites. Uh, we'll start with Steve, Tasha, and then we'll do Bonnie. Steve's looking at me like, you tell him. 
<laughs> he's like, <laughs> Steve's like, wait, where do you, where do people What's find me? What's media? my okay? Social maybe media? Bonnie, you go, you tell us where everybody is, or you and Steve well, at least. The, they can always go. If you can't remember anything. You can re, you can go to fitblog.com, which is a play on our last name, so it's P F I T B L O G. So fitblog.com has all of our links to Facebook and all that kind of stuff. But Steve's right. Twitter and Instagram is his name. It's at uh, it's at Steve Feaster. And Feaster is P F I E S T E R. So Steve Feaster with the whole backslash. There. Yeah, he's, cool. he's he's social. He's learning. I'm and I'm uh, at, at I'm uh, at Bonnie Feaster is my handle for Instagram and Twitter, and then Bonnie's fan page on on uh, Facebook. But again, everything's kind of hubbed out of the Fit Blog, and that's where they can find you can see our marriage testimony and. Our all okay. and our blogs and all that kind of stuff. Okay, and Tasha. Then Tasha. Tasha. Um, for Facebook, it's Tasha Reese R E I S S Cruz, and then for Instagram, it's just Tasha Cruz with two Z's. Awesome. We're we're gonna put that in the show yeah, notes. Yeah, this will too. all be in the show notes just oh, for everybody to yeah, know. But that way, because I know, because here's the thing: when you're on TV like this, people are gonna want to reach out to you. They connect with you, and they're gonna want to be inspired by you even after the show. So that's what's great about social media. Okay, lightning round. I'm going to turn the time over to Lynn. All right, so. And you guys, she'll dun, explain the rules. Dun, dun, <laughs> my favorite part. All right, so the lightning round, my favorite part, the least important part of the show, which is why it's my favorite part. So we're going to okay. ask you some questions. They literally probably don't matter, but they matter to me. And I want you to answer them <laughs> as quickly as possible. First thing and that comes to the first thing that comes to your mind, no filtering. Okay, uh-huh. whatever starts jump. This is this is where people aren't going to hear this, but you guys were asking, hey, if we say something really bad, can you edit it out? And I was like, no. <laughs> and this is why. Because of the light. <laughs> okay. 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 And we'll let you guys pick who goes first, but you, it, it, you know. Well. It's for all three of you. Maybe. I might decide who I want to go first. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mo- <laughs> most embarrassing moment during the eight months of filming. Steve. Getting my prostate checked on camera. <laughs> Oh! Yeah. Wow, that's a good one. There's only two people laughing right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's oh funny. man. Okay. Well, that was better than I thought it was going to be. Okay, Tasha, most embarrassing moment during the eight months of filming. It could be on or off camera, it doesn't matter, just during the whole period of time. Um, peeing my pants, working out on camera. It's because yeah. you've had kids. Amen, girl. <laughs> I got you. Makes you feel better. I film workouts. And I had all guys, but I had all guys. Like the producers were, were guys. Steve was a guy. Dang the camera guy. Everyone was a guy. So no one. But yeah, you were. Just that. So sorry for herself. I peed my pants a few times. <laughs> <laughs> like happy Gilmore, right? after the right? prostate was checked. <laughs> right after the prostate was checked. You're not okay. cool unless you pee your pants. Okay. Right? <laughs> That's funny. Fa- favorite. <laughs> favorite treat food. Brawny. Favorite treat, treat, uh, cheat food. I yes. say, I call it, I call it treat. You can call it cheat, whatever you want. I like treat. It sounds better. <laughs> Mexican, Mexican, anything Mexican. Oh, anything. Tacos, enchiladas, taquitos, yep. uh, chip sauce, like guacamole. You <laughs> name it, I want it all. Wait, wait. I have a question for Bonnie, really quick, Lynn. Uh, what was your most embarrassing experience with Steve, with him getting the weight? Because I know you have some funny stories with him being <laughs> overweight. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I think I think uh, probably we were out at a restaurant and and he was like burping and stuff, and he just looked at me and goes, "I am so sorry. I don't know what is happening to me." And he's like, "But my body is just not agreeing with this food." And it was like it was this moment of looking at me with these sad eyes of just he didn't know what was going on, and he was looking down at his belly like it was <laughs> it was hating. <laughs> How can her most embarrassing moment be me being embarrassed? That's just wrong. Yeah, no, it was just, yeah, you were, you were well, feeling bad. Well, I was going to say it, it, it may be her looking around while you're passing the gas <laughs> and wondering, yeah. like, who's who's looking at you guys. I don't know. I don't know. Just saying. I mean, he did walk around with Pepto-Bismol in one pocket and Tums in the other back pocket, and they actually walked around like that. That's oh really hot. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love that. Sounds like pregnancy. Me, too. There. Okay. okay, Tasha. Oh, the yes. be- the best part or funniest part of you seeing Steve gain all that weight. Best part. Oh, his man, his man boobs totally. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> wow. I'm glad you kept it to yourself. What, what is, what is that? Do you, would you call that like a big B or a small C? Or... I don't know. Wow. <laughs> that is funny. Okay. Least favorite exercise move. Steve, Bonnie, then Tasha. Least favorite exercise move. If you do not have a least favorite exercise move, I'm going to punch you guys in the face. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I, mean, I have just least kidding. favorite. Like, I hate long distance running, but um, as that far as count. like just move goes, that, that counts? Oh, that could totally count. That I hate, totally I, counts. I, I don't like running. I don't like running. Long distance running. Anything over three miles, I, I hate it with a passion. Uh, when you said long distance running, I was thinking like 100 meters. But all right, all right. Yeah. Three miles, <laughs> sure, whatever. But I really- Teach their own long distance. I think going to the car, whatever. Okay. Okay. Who's Bonnie. Bonnie. It's a tie between stomps and big jacks. Oh, what's a, wait, what's a stomp? Jack. What's a stomp? It's like the starburst type. Oh, no, what, yeah, those, well, the big jacks is like it's just a big, huge jack up in the air. And, yeah. um, and I'm not flexible, so I, I could either pull my groin, like, you know, I mean, it's, it's not pretty. But anyway, and then stomps, you're, you're down like in this crouched position, like in a lunge, and you kick mm-hmm. one foot back. And you bring it back, back only one leg at a time. So you're going mm. one leg, over like a and over. one-legged mountain climber kind of. Thing. Yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. It's always good. after like a string of leg exercises. So your quads mm-hmm. are on fire. First time I ever did it, I stood up and my and we were actually on camera, and my leg gave out, and uh, we had to splice <laughs> it out because my leg quit working. I've never done any either of those. I've, I've well, never I'll, done any of those. I will have to uh, share it on uh, Instagram mm. for you, but uh, Tasha knows those stomps really well. Yes, I don't. I, those don't bother me. I hate them. No. Okay. My least favorite. Least favorite. Yes. Um, when I have to jump up onto the pull-up bar, <laughs> like oh, the pull-up bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she hated. She hated like real mountain climbers when I made her do it. Oh like, yeah. Really good. Especially, form. especially if my shoes are big. <laughs> okay. No, I feel you. I. Man, I have so many. I just realized I don't know if I have a real least favorite. I All of those that you mentioned, I'm like, yeah, I don't like those either. I was like, oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. I don't like anything where you have to jump because if you've had kids, you pee your pants. Okay. Exactly. 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 Yeah. <laughs> all right. Cool. Well, you guys did. You guys made it through. You suffered through the you lightning survived. round. Flying covers. Brilliant. Great answers. I mostly like the prostate answer the most, to be honest. Okay, one last one last question. One last question before we go, uh, Steve. I think I know your answer. Would you ever do fit to fat to fit again? Drew, I'm sorry, but I would. <laughs> season. We need somebody for season two, Steve. Come on, I'm just kidding. Bonnie, oh, like, Bonnie raised two. her hand. Bonnie, what about Bonnie? you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a maybe. That's a maybe. That's a maybe. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. It's not. I know. I don't I'm just know. Kidding. Means maybe. <laughs> Right. I, I wouldn't. I you wouldn't guys are you. awesome. Your show, the the show was so you know your episode was so motivating. You guys and inspirational people. Go to the show notes. Go follow all of them. I'm sure they're going to be posting many motivational, inspirational things to come. Yep. And next week, you guys don't forget to tune into Adonis and Alyssa's episode next Tuesday. Uh, and thank you guys for for tuning in to Fit to Fat Fit. And Steve, Tasha, Bonnie, thank you guys for being a part of the family. And for spreading the good word and being part of this this movement, this fit to fat to fit movement, um, and uh, you know, my hope with all of this, honestly, is to help bridge the gap between um, uh, the 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 two sides of these skinny fit people over here who who judge and don't understand, and the people who are overweight who uh, judge those on the other side. And if we could just have some better understanding on both sides and bridge that gap, this world and our society would be a lot happier place to live. So that's my hope with this whole fit to fat to fit movement. So thank you guys for being a part of it. And thanks for coming on the podcast today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Hope you enjoyed today's podcast with Steve, Bonnie and Tasha. We hope you enjoyed their episode on A&E. If you haven't watched it yet, or if you, you know, DVR it, go watch the episode first. Uh, you'll be inspired. You'll be motivated. Uh, we're, we're glad that you are supporting both the podcast and the TV show um, we appreciate all of our fans. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please go subscribe to this podcast on iTunes and please leave us a review. It definitely helps when we have people leaving us reviews. It knows that what we're doing is, is valuable to you guys. Please feel free to reach out to us on social media and let us know if you have suggestions for things you want to hear about topics or guests you want us to have on. We're, we're all ears. So f- feel free to reach out to us and let us know what you think. Um, my website, if you want to reach out to me, is fit to fit to fit.com. I sign up for my newsletter to stay in the know. Uh, you can also reach out to me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at fit 
to fat to fit with a number two. The TV show is fit to fat to fit. Uh, so just remember the difference between those two. Yeah. And if you want to find me, my website is the number two fit at home.com. I also have a newsletter um, sign up that you can sign up for there. Um, all of my social media handles are the number two fit at home. So love to hear from you. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much. And if, if you feel like donating to the podcast, we would definitely love to have your support to pay for the cost to keep this podcast alive. Uh, that's on the fit to fat to fit.com forward slash podcast uh, site. And we, we, we love you guys. We really do. And we hope you will join us next week for another great episode. See ya. See you guys. See you guys.